Welcome to another video. Today, using our simple LED and LDR example, we'll show you how you can use Visual Micro to work out the correct trigger conditions for your projects. In this case, we simply want to turn on the LED when it gets dark enough. So we've all added lots of serial print line statements to our code in the past to output sensor data. But this often gives a lot of output to read and rarely has useful timestamps against it. And it can be hard to make sense of multiple sensors and conditions just from these kinds of output. One of the first things we can do in Visual Micro is enable the timestamp option on the serial monitor to give us real world timings against our data. This can be used in conjunction with the logging feature so that it is all recorded to a text file. Of course, on a complex project, this may not be enough. So we can use the serial debugger to simplify what's going on. So first, we're going to remove all of our serial print line statements from our code. And then we're going to change from the release configuration to the debug configuration which will automatically enable the debug serial option. This can be enabled manually if required. The advantage of using this is that when we change from debug to release, all of the things that we add in the break and trace points is no longer added to your code, so it's very simple to release your project. If we add a breakpoint, we can then configure the actions to either output our data or plot it on a chart. So here we're going to use the app plot syntax, which there are more details on in the link in the top right, so that we can output our LDR and LED data to some graphs, which should make it easier to interpret. The advantage of having this graphical representation is you can have many different charts from many different points coming out in your code which can be combined or separated as needed. So if we just add our variables to record in here we can then commit this and build and upload our code to the board. We're going to use this as a trace point so the code doesn't stop here, so it constantly draws the data for us. We also want to see the output from our digital pins, which we can configure on the vMicro debugger menu with the digital pin monitor, which is also available for your analog pins as well. So if we now build and upload this, we'll see how things change when the project starts up. So here we can see our two charts have appeared. We can dock them to make them easier to view in Visual Studio. As we can see in the top right, we have our expressions window, which also gives the min and the max of your data, and various other options are available by right-clicking the header of this table. In this project, the min and the max will be very useful, so we can find out the lowest and highest reading on, say, a normal day for our LDR. We can also see in the bottom digital pin view that the LED is lighting up when we shine a torch over the project. We also have timestamp data in the output window. So what we can do is add more information to that so that we have both our charts and the stream of output data with timestamps on. So if we add another breakpoint, we can just put our variables into the curly braces in the actions. And you can also use function calls in these as well, as we'll show with the millis function. 
Again, we're going to leave this as a trace point so our code doesn't actually stop executing when we reach it. If we just add millis on the end, again, in the curly braces, you just have your function call with any parameters and the curly brackets as needed. You can also use conditional breakpoints if required so that it only stops or traces data when a certain condition has been met. This can be very useful if you only want to monitor a certain scenario in your code or when a certain event occurs. We can now see we have our extra information in the output window, as well as all of our readings with their min and max shown in the top right. This can make it very simple to figure out where your thresholds are, as well as be able to trace through your project while it's running. We've been able to tell so far from monitoring this that our sensor value of 500 is a bit high, as it's about dark enough now to trigger our sensor ideally. So if we change that to the 100 we've seen in the data window, that should be perfect. So there we go. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And do let us know in the comments if there are any other features that you want us to explore.